Dante and Virgil have now reached the gate of hell. An inscription announces the feature of that place, realm of eternal hopeless pain. Dante does not understand the meaning of this obscure inscription, so he asks his master. He explains to him that this is the moment to be brave. Then he takes his hand and smiles to him to cheer him up. Then together, Dante and Virgil pass through the gate of hell. The first souls they meet are the uncommitted of the world. They are those who never took position, never committed. One need to look at them because they exist, but then must go forward right away and ignore them. In the third canto of Inferno, we find for the first time the law of retribution. The souls of the uncommitted, as in life they always refused to commit, they are now obliged to endlessly follow a wavering banner. Furthermore, they are constantly stung by wasps and flies, and their blood, mixed with tears, is shed unwillingly, as food for worms. Dante recognizes some souls, and between them there seems to be, at least according to the dominant interpretation, Pope Celestine V, who covertly gave up the chair of Peter after only five months. Then Dante and Virgil arrive at the river Akron, and the attention of the poet is caught by the main character of this canto, Charon, the ferryman of hell. He is described with a demonic and severe profile. When he sees Dante and understands his life, Charon harshly invites him to step aside, because in that place there is no room for living beings. But then Charon calms down when Virgil reveals to him that God himself wants Dante to be there. Then Charon led the sinners on his boat and beats with his oar any of them who lies on the bottom of the boat. Then the ground starts shaking. Dante is alive and faints, like a man overcome by sleep. <laughs>